Jonathan, thank you very much, Ben, for uh, a very, very speedy uh, sort of uh, walkthrough of the, of the key findings and the sort of challenges and contradictions that come out, I think, from the research. Can I now turn to you, Lord Hutton, to give your response to what you were making of this report and perhaps a little bit about how politicians might regard the findings and so on and some of the governmental uh, dimensions. Yes, thank you, uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Lawrence, for that introduction. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a great pleasure to, to be here. Thank you very much indeed for asking me to, uh, to say a few words at this um, important event today. Um, I, I'm going to try and sort of break with uh, a lifetime of political speeches and actually start, I hope, in the, in the right place uh, with, with, with my remarks today. And I'm going to say some fairly sort of obvious things, but I think they need to be said because sometimes we don't actually say it. First up, and most obvious, right now we are going through the most extraordinary period of change in the pension and retirement savings landscape. And these changes, first and foremost, have been driven by the need to respond to what are unprecedented increases in life expectancy. Underpinning all of these reforms is one very obvious plank and foundation. And it's really important we, we keep this in mind. If we are going to respond effectively to these unprecedented changes in life expectancy, it is absolutely clear to me, it's been very clear to everyone in Parliament for a decade or more or so, that individuals will have to take greater personal financial responsibility for planning for their retirement years. It is no longer safe, fair, or reasonable to ask taxpayers to take the principal responsibility for that. So it is becoming more and more important to ensure that people are saving enough to ensure they can enjoy the lifestyle they expect in retirement. And that is something we've got to keep at the forefront of our mind. So it is really, really important that we have a retirement savings policy that works for savers because we're putting them in the driving seat. And I said at the beginning that there is this unprecedented wave of change going on right now. And I j just want to list the, the changes so you know, we can really sort of see this properly. We have reforms to the state pension, hugely important. We've got the massive change of auto-enrollment, bringing millions of people into retirement, saving for the first time, a, a huge reform. We've got the possible introduction of new risk-sharing CDC schemes. We've got the ending of the requirement in a few months' time for people to purchase an annuity. And now we've got the introduction of a new national pension guidance service for people approaching retirement. That all adds up, I, I think, to an unprecedented process of change. And we all know from our observation of politicians, even recovering politicians like myself, that we tend to exaggerate for a living. It's kind of what we do. I don't think it's possible to exaggerate the significance of these changes. But change can bring confusion. And unless it's managed properly, it can also bring uncertainty. And with the right information about what savers want and need, I think we can hopefully avoid those sorts of outcomes and how we can make these reforms work. Uh, and that is why I think today's report is really so timely and important. And I, I want to warmly congratulate all of the organizations and companies who've been involved in this publication. Now, at a, at a time like this, Lawrence asked me to think about what politicians would, would make of this report. I, I think at a time like this, it's not just the policymakers or our politicians. I think it's our savers, the people out there who we are really focused on, and the financial institutions that serve them, that really need to understand the impact of all of these changes. I think the key goal must be, surely, to encourage more people to save more for the time they give up paid employment, and that when they do retire, they have enough to live on for the whole period of their retirement. And I think, although that sounds a very simple and obvious objective, I think it's been made incredibly more difficult to achieve by, by three things. The adverse media coverage of pensions, which has really caused a lot of fear and concern out there. I think it's also been made more complicated by the demise of defined benefit. And thirdly, the result of all of that has been the, the consequent overall reduction in levels of retirement saving that we've seen in recent years. Now, we all hope and expect that auto-enrollment will, will correct that. But we have lost our collective savings habit 
in recent years. And this is a really significant challenge for everyone in the industry and in government. Because if we are going to respond to this tidal wave of demographic change, quite simply, we have to become a nation of savers again. And we have to think and act like savers. Now, I think if we're going to achieve that outcome, we need to know clearly more about what savers are telling us about their own priorities. And this is where I think this report is incredibly important. Um, it confirms for me one important fact, and we should never lose sight of this, that people want a secure, reliable retirement income that is going to cover the whole of their retirement years. And I, for one, continue to believe that annuities can and will play an important role in securing this outcome. We also know how confusing people find the whole system, and again, we've heard today some evidence of that, and how critically important it is that savers get the right advice about what are their best options, both during the period they are saving and also, of course, when they approach retirement. Getting the right advice in the current climate of, of reform and change is a first order priority. And this is made even more important given the nature, as I say, of the reforms to the annuities market. So I think we should treat very seriously indeed the report's finding that as many as 20% of people don't intend to take up the offer of free guidance about what to do with their pension pots when they retire. I think that is something that we should all give very serious thought to. Equally serious, perhaps even more serious, is the finding that only um, a small proportion of people with DC POTS plan to take any professional advice about their retirement options at all. And that is a, is a very sobering statistic. And I think if, uh, to answer Lawrence's question, which you know, I, I never obviously did when I, when I was in government, that, that wouldn't have been right and proper. Um, but now I, it is my job to try and answer those questions that are thrown at me. I, I think, frankly, we, we can't avoid the implication of those findings. Laissez-faire will not be enough to avoid a possible retirement income shortfall for hundreds of thousands of people. And I think it's incumbent upon us to do everything we can to avoid this. And that is why today I can absolutely endorse that I think the two principal recommendations that are set out in this report about how to strengthen the guidance guarantee and the need for a so-called second line of defense to ensure that people who decide not to take any guidance or who are at risk of making poorly informed decisions, get proper support. If we know there is a risk of poverty in retirement, and we know that we can mitigate that risk while still preserving the general principle of greater personal freedom for savers, then I think we're duty bound to take that action. And I hope it is not too late in this session of Parliament to do that, because we have the opportunity with the Pension Schemes Bill to do that. If we don't do it now, then I'm pretty sure we will have to do it at some point in the future. And sadly, by then, it will be too late for some people. So I hope today's report, Lawrence, is a wake-up call. I think there is a way forward. We can preserve the principle of what is being offered today, which is greater personal freedom. I think none of us want to be treated like idiots. Uh, there is a way of managing this process in a way that avoids the most terrible outcome of all, uh, it's where we're standing here in a few years' time bemoaning the fact that thousands and thousands of people are complaining that they didn't get the right advice and as a consequence uh, are going to run out of money in their retirement years. So congratulations to the report's authors. You've done us all, I think, a, a great service uh, in pre presenting this report at this particular time. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.